Hey, this is Mike from Run Testers, and in this video, we're going to be giving you our multi tester review of this, the New Balance SC Elite V4. Now, myself, Nick, Tom, Kieran, and Laura have all been testing this shoe. And what we'll do is we'll take you through the key stats of the Elite V4, what's changed from the Elite V3, get into those run thoughts, and then let you know whether the New Balance SC Elite V4 is a racing shoe and a running shoe that you should get in 2024. So here's a quick lowdown on the key stats about the New Balance SC Elite V4. So we'll start with price, and this comes in at £260 in the UK or $250 in the US. So that is a bit of a big jump up from the New Balance SC Elite V3, which was closer to that kind of £200, $200 price point, and you can probably pick it up for less than that now as well. So in terms of weight out, men's UK size 8 weighed in at 225 grams. That is up from 210 grams on the same size Elite V3. So there is a little bit of a jump up in weight on the Elite V4 compared to the Elite V3. So in terms of drop, it is a 4mm one here. And like the Elite V3, the stack heights have remained the same. So it is 40mm at the heel and 36mm at the forefoot. So into that design and aside from a pretty unique look on the Elite V4 we are now seeing a change in the upper material and that general makeup of the upper on the Elite V4 so out is the sock like knit upper that we got on the V3 and in is a mesh one that New Balance is calling Phantom Fit to give you that kind of improved fit and hold compared to its predecessor. Now below that sits a fuel cell midsole and that is a full piba based midsole that we're getting here on the elite v4 now with that is new balance's energy art carbon plate now it is a lighter one and a curvier one than the one used in the elite v3 and that is to help improve the energy returns on this shoe now the alt sole has been reworked as well too and there's a definitely a little bit more coverage of that energy art carbon plate as well there too but ultimately it's there to give you the kind of key areas of grip and traction at that kind of forefoot and at the heel to make sure that you're getting protection and durability out of this shoe over those longer distances The fit of the SC Elite V4 has been pretty good for me in my normal running shoe size. With New Balance, you've got to be a bit careful because of the way they convert sizing. So a UK 9 is a US 9.5 in New Balance. So with lots of brands, that will be a US 10. So it can be a bit tight with the brand sometimes. And sometimes they just make very short shoes, I'm sure of. I think New Balance have a tendency to do that, but I haven't had that with this shoe. I think it's fit very well in my normal UK size. Maybe if you're big for your UK size, you could look at getting the slightly uh, bigger size so you have more of a conversion across US sizes between brands. But overall, I was happy with the amount of room and the hold in the forefoot there with my normal UK size. Heel is very loose, not a lot of padding going on around there. Certainly potential to rub. I would heel lock it, which is what I did. I haven't had any heel rubbing as a result. And actually the looseness of the design does mean it hasn't irritated my Achilles at all, which isn't always the case with racing shoes that can clamp the Achilles a little bit. So that's a positive to this loose design, but I think Overall, it's probably one that most runners are going to have to be a bit careful with to not get uh, heel rubbing, which obviously would be a big concern over long distances. In terms of what I've got, I've got a UK size 8. That's the same size I had the Elite V3 in. Now, I think the Elite V3 upper and fit in general is one that kind of grew on me eventually. But I think those initial kind of runs I did with it, I did think you had to work pretty hard to get a good lockdown in those shoes, particularly on the kind of tongue and that kind of sock-like in general upper. Now, this is a massive departure from what we got in the Elite V3. And in terms of what I've got in my UK size A, I found the space up front of the toe generally fine for me. And particularly in those longer runs, I didn't feel like I wanted a lot more room there and it felt good enough for me. Some might find it a little bit snug, but generally for me, it was absolutely fine. As I said, I actually prefer the kind of upper makeup, particularly from the laces and the tongue on a shoe compared to its predecessor. And I felt, you know, from a lockdown point of view, it was fine. It was really about the heel really where you've got no padding whatsoever not none of that kind of extra padding you might see on some super shoes that you know that are out there as well too which did mean as i said going back further on these kind of um eyelets to really get a better lockdown at the hill and make sure there was no slippage you do have to work a little bit hard on that front but if you can or make it work for you then i do think you can get generally a good hold and fit with this shoe i would say go true to size based on my testing there may be an argument to maybe play around with a half size up just to get a little bit more room, a little bit more space, if that's something that maybe you're finding you're lacking in your usual size in the Elite V4. Fit for me in the New Balance SC Elite V4. I'm size eight in the UK, this is a size eight. Uh, I found it to be a comfortable shoe to wear. I've not had any issues with it. I did 
find that when I first put it on, it did feel a little bit loose around the heel. Uh, so it took me a bit of time to get a bit of a lockdown fit. Um, but once I'd got that, it was fine. I've raced in this shoe uh, and you can get a nice lockdown fit with it. Um, so yeah, I would stay to my UK size in this shoe. So then when it comes to fit, I went on a journey with these shoes. Initially, I found these acceptably snug, you know, with your classic close hugging race fit that's good for lockdown and secure hold across the midfoot and into the heels. Yes, it's kind of tight, not unlike the kind of things like the Hoka Rocket X2 fit snug, all of that kind of stuff you expect from a race shoe. But to the end of my 90 minute test run, there's one thing I did find that was a bit difficult and I found them a bit short. I could feel my toes hitting the ends of the toe box, particularly when I was landing more with my forefoot. And I think over a three hour marathon, I think that probably become problematic for me. I also had some quite serious heel cutting, which I'm not sure if that's down to fit, but it wasn't great. And overall, I think I'd recommend going half a size up in these to get that extra length, particularly if you plan to race marathons or longer in them. Jury is out on whether or not sizing up will prevent that heel cutting though. One of the things that I really love about the V3 is how comfortable it is. Um, the the, the sock-like upper gives, it fits your foot nicely and it gets 10 out of 10 for that for me. So the V4, the upper is very different and it fits very different too. It's it's a similar sizing, I'd say, to the V3. So I'm a UK size 6. I wore a UK size 6 in both. Because of the engineered mesh of the V4 and the fact that there's less give there, I would maybe go up half a size. It is a snug fit. Um, and in the V3, there is a bit more, um, it gives, it gives more. So there's, there's a bit more leeway in there. Whereas you kind of, you've got the fit that you've got in the V4. I did have some problems, um, on my first run. I ended up stopping a couple of times to retie, particularly my right foot. Now it could be just me, couldn't it? But none of the other shoes that I'm running in at the moment, I'm having issues on my right foot. Um, just this one so it it did these off so the the more that I ran in it I've run in it four times the the better I got that fit to be I don't know whether there was some some uh loosening of that of that upper it might might have been given a little bit as it warmed over those runs uh but it did it did improve a lot I didn't have any issues um like Kieran's experience my my heels are all intact they're okay um, so around the back, absolutely no problems for me, no slippage or anything. It was just in this in this toe box. I found it to be a little bit tight there. Um, I mean, in that V3 upper, the laces apparently aren't there doing very much. There's um, they're just there just to like tie it off a little bit. But you know, you're in there, you've got that sock, and it's very comfortable. Whereas you are using the the laces here a bit more to kind of to get that fit and I did have to take those those four runs that I did to get to being quite happy with it. So I've run just over 55k in the SE Elite V4 and I've used it for the long run which we had up on the channel as part of our first run where I did around 22k with an extended 8k pickup looking at around kind of 340 per k pace. I've done an easy to steady hour progression run in the shoe finishing down towards my marathon pace and then I took it down the track for a pretty tough session running five threshold miles so a 530 per mile pace with short recoveries that were float recovery so I did 400 meters or actually back to the mile start line so less just less than 400 meters in around 95 Five seconds so it ended up being about 12 and a half k at 330 per k pace so my marathon pace and that is the session where i think this shoe really shone because it did feel very cruisy it felt very bouncy it doesn't feel really aggressive when i was running the faster pace on those mile reps there but it really did feel like it was bouncy and propelling me through those reps and helping me to conserve energy keep rolling through really nicely and on an extended session like that it was perfect for it and I did enjoy doing that run in it for sure. In fact, I've enjoyed all my runs in the shoe. It's like the long run I did was on tired legs, but you know, it did protect the legs pretty well and help me run quick. Progression run felt really good. 
rolling through easy to fast paces. I do think it's one of the more uh, comfortable shoes of the super shoes to use for the easier paces I did at the start of that run because I do think it is quite a forgiving shoe in terms of the ride feel. I do think it's one that will be accessible to lots of runners. It's quite a comfortable shoe. And then it's got the pace for that hard track session. You know, one of the hardest sessions I've done in a little while and I felt very comfortable doing it in this shoe on a wet and greasy track as well with no problems with grip, which is nice to know. Just, you know, didn't always buy super shoes for the grip, but this has got pretty good grip. So yeah, I've enjoyed my running experience like all round. I think it's a shoe that's up there as a really good super shoe and the best one New Balance has made, certainly for looking at longer distances like the marathon. I think maybe the S Elite V3, which I know a lot of people don't like, I really did like. I thought it had a really good aggressive ride for shorter races in particular. You've got more bounce here. The new foam is certainly more bouncy and I do think it's a better marathon racer for sure as a result. But despite all of those positives and the shoe I really like, just, I don't know, left me wanting slightly more. I think there's a little bit more to come from New Balance still in their shoe lineup and maybe it will come with the SC Pacer V2, which is gonna have the same foam in a smaller stack so it'll be a bit lighter because this is a bit of a chunky fun stir it is around you know just show off 250 grams which is where shoes like the adios pro 3 and the alpha fly 2 were in terms of weight it just feels now we're moving towards this next generation of super shoes like the alpha fly 3 where we're looking at actually really lightweight shoes that still have big stacks and deliver a lot of bounce and i think the se elite v4 isn't quite that it's not very light it's not very agile it's not a shoe that i necessarily be desperate to pull on for a 5k where i'm sure it'll be very fast for sure like all of these shoes but I think there'll be better options for that. Then if you're looking at the longer distances, I think you can get a similar level of bounce from other shoes that are also lighter and just a bit more aggressive, like the Alpha Fly 3. So in isolation, just testing this about any other shoes in my mind, I'd have, you know, I'd, I would have adored it even more. I thought it would have been you know, best thing I've ever pulled on my feet. And I did really like running in it. And I think it's a great shoe. A shoe I'd be happy to wear for a marathon. I think where it struggles is when you come to the comparisons about what else is out there and maybe what you can get from other brands. So into that run test now, post those couple of runs I did for our first round video, what I really wanted to see was how the Elite V4 handled those kind of longer runs, because ultimately, I think that's what the changes are really geared towards from the Elite V3, which I think is a very good running shoe as well. But ultimately, I think what it comes down to is if I had a marathon to do, if I had a race to do, would it be the shoe that I pick over other shoes? Probably not, and I think maybe it just lacked a little bit of wow factor for me at those longer distances. Now, with the Elite V4, it's a totally different shoe, totally different prospect, and I do think it is a better shoe suited for those longer runs. The changes in the midsole, I do just make it feel like a better shoe for those longer distances. And what I would say is, it's not a super aggressive shoe, not a super aggressive shoe like things like the Alpha Fly, things like the Hocus Yellow X1, what I've just tested, you know, other super shoes that have come out where they really kind of get you up on your toes very quickly in those kind of transitions and how that rocker kind of works. Now, I almost feel like the rocker and Elite V3 is probably a little bit more pronounced, even when you're not probably going all out in it. So I think with the Elite V4, once you engage in it at those kind of quicker paces, that's where you get the most the most rewarding feel out of it. And it is it is a shoe that feels nice to go quick. I think the other thing it is, and it feels like a very accommodating shoe. And I think accommodating might sound like the nicest way to describe a shoe, but I think in terms of a shoe that you may want to run quick over a marathon distance, things like the Endorphin Pro 3, the Socony Endorphin Pro 3, or that Endorphin Pro range, because the four's coming out. The shoes that I feel like, you know, for me, if I had to ease off in places or, you know, for whatever reason, that it's a shoe that I would feel comfortable to do that. And I felt like in the longer runs that I've done, when I was running close to my marathon pace, where it's just kind of, you know, below eight minute miles, kind of 7.30, 7.40 at my kind of quickest, it felt okay to do that and to kind of slow off a little bit in this shoe. And that, I think that's a, a really important aspect or characteristic of the Elite V4. I think ultimately, you know, you're getting a smooth ride. You're getting, as I said, you know, when you're running quicker, it feels nice. That change, that having that full Piba midsole does make a huge difference, I think, in the feeling of running in this shoe. Another thing I think, you know, I'd probably point out, it has been an issue in my runs, but, you know, the outsole and the general, you know, size of the shoe, and the weight of the shoe has grown a little bit on the Elite V3. And I think, you know, that was a really nimble shoe to run in. This isn't a clunky or heavy shoe, but ultimately you compare it to the other super shoes that are out there. It has picked up a little bit in weight in comparison. You know, there is quite a lot of rubber in this outsole and from a durability and grip point of view, it's been absolutely fine. I haven't had to run in any rain or wet conditions, but you know, pavements and roads has been absolutely fine. Cornering has been good as well too. 
but it also feels like maybe it's it's added a bit of weight to the overall you know feeling of this shoe and running in it now in terms of the durability it's been okay i'm not seeing any terrible signs of wear over kind of 50k of running in this shoe i am seeing kind of a weird and i don't know if it's going to affect the performance over time but seeing some like a little bit of a dent in the kind of this kind of geometry style uh, midsole design that we're getting here on the elite v4 as i said I don't know that's going to affect performance, but I am seeing some dent or just a you know, kind of noticeable dent on one side of the shoe. So for me, all very positive. I think it feels good to run quick in at shorter distances. Ultimately, I think it is a better shoe to run longer in than the Elite V3. And that comes down to the midsole changes. I think the upper just works a little bit better once you get that lockdown right. And the outsole feels, I think, as good as what we had in the Elite V3 as well too. So, you know, not changing things that worked from the previous shoes. So the SC Elite line or the RC Elite to SC Elite line is an interesting one because uh, it's not one that I've massively been a fan of in the past. The RC Elite 2... Uh, I quite liked, but I found it wasn't a very fast shoe. I couldn't really race in it the same way that I could race in other super shoes at the time, like the Vaporfly. Uh, but it was a very comfortable shoe, really nice shoe to wear. The SC Elite V3, uh, I do like that shoe. It just doesn't really deliver the goods when it comes to super shoes for me. Um, and it was never a shoe that I would pick up if I was going to take on a race that I really wanted to get a fast time in. Because it just felt to me that it just didn't have the bounce or the propulsion that I want from my super shoes. Um, and I should probably say here that I am a runner that loves soft, bouncy shoes. The more bounce, the better. Uh, and I just didn't get it from the SC Elite V3. Now the SC Elite V4 is much further in the right direction for me. It's a big difference from the SC Elite V3. Uh, the midsole stack is a lot bouncier. Um, it's softer. There's just this just feels a lot more like the sort of super shoe that I like to wear. I'm talking things like the Sogni Endorphin Pro 3, the Alpha Flies. Uh, it's moving more into that, that world now. And it's definitely a shoe that I would pick up now as a, an option that I would happily use for uh, races like marathons, half marathons, things like that. Um, so I've done about 50k in this shoe so far. Uh, the I've raced in it. Uh, I've done a 5k and a 10k in this shoe. I haven't done anything over that in uh, over a race, but I have got half marathon coming up soon, uh, which I may use it for. Um, what I would say about it is that it is much more my sort of shoe. I now really like the feel of this shoe. Um, it's there's a nice bit of bounce to it. There's a nice bit of softness in it. It's a very comfortable shoe to wear, and to be honest, it's pretty similar to what you'd expect from a lot of big super shoes out there like the alpha flies and talking to pro 3 a6 must speed uh sky those sort of shoes it feels very similar to those now uh and it's definitely a top tier super shoe for me um what i would say though is that it is a very subtle super shoe so whereas in with shoes like the alpha flies and the vapor flies they're very um designed to really make you run fast they really propel you forward they make you run in a certain way that is fast you're running they're designed to make you run faster um i think this is more of a cruiser uh, a little bit like the socket endorphin pro 3 uh which is one of my favorite race shoes of all time um because it's it it's comfortable the midsole is very enjoyable to wear um and it just feels really great to get a nice consistent pace on the 10k that i did in it uh, I ended up with about 39 minutes. My PB is 37 minutes and 30, but I'm not as fit as I was when I did that, and it was really windy. So I'd definitely say that in terms of performance, it's right up there with with the best of the best uh, for me. What it really comes down to, though, I think, is that it just doesn't have some of the performance feels that you might get in things like the Alpha Fly 3, Alpha Fly 1, uh, those sorts of shoes. Um, but it's a very solid, comfortable bouncy shoe that really works well and I think it's probably best suited to those sort of half marathon to marathon distance events where you want something that maybe is a little bit more subtle that just really keeps your legs feeling fresh and just moves you along nicely throughout the course of that race. Other things I would say about the shoe is that it has a really nice outsole. I'm impressed by the outsole and um, it has passed so far over that um, 50k or so that I've done uh, the outsole test for me because I normally rip the outsole off of most super shoes. I've still got quite no issues at all with the outsole on these so far. So that's a good sign. Um, and uh, I found them to be pretty comfortable to wear over the run as well. Um, they also feel relatively stable uh, for me. They're, 
not the most stable shoe. They're still a super shoe that's got this sort of massive midsole in them. Um, but they felt pretty good. They're not a, they're not an unstable super shoe for me. So for my run tests, I've done 30 plus miles in the New Balance SC Elite V4. I did some faster marathon pace sessions. I did a longer 90 minute run with fast intervals interspersed and a couple of proper half marathon pace workouts as well. Overall, there's a lot I like about these shoes. I mean, I, I think they look great for a start. I'm a big fan of the cutaway and this kind of geometric look. I found the uppers breathable enough and I think the initial step in comfort was pretty good for these shoes. Not too fussy and fiddly. You know, some race shoes can be a bit kind of awkward and a bit difficult to get on. These you can slip them on really nice and easy, lace them down. That's all good. They are a very different proposition to the SC Elite V3, which I really like for being compact and lively and in some ways more accessible than the likes of the Alpha Fly or the Adios Pro. You could say the V3, I think, was a bit more of a friendly sort of traditional super shoe in terms of the uppers, the way it kind of fit and that midsole ride. That might have limited its all-out speed, but it was a shoe you could use for a wider variety of races, I thought, and training runs. Overall, it was just a bit more forgiving, I thought. Now, this next-gen New Balance shoe has definitely moved closer to the other super shoes. There's much more of an Adios Pro vibe here to the ride, to the look and the feel. And in my tests, I found they had a big, soft, springy, bouncy feel with plenty of rebound and plenty of energy and absolutely bucket loads of fun. Generally speaking, I really enjoyed the way that they moved underfoot for my marathon pace and faster efforts yeah out there I, you know i had no problems with the ride at all i thought there was plenty going on here there's also enough cushioning to take care of you if the engine fails which is something you know if, the, if your engine falls out you drop off to a plod whatever you're really struggling there is enough here in terms of that midsole cushioning to protect you a little bit for that i didn't feel the carbon plate but that can be a good thing and for my style, I think this rockering, you know, it's quite a strong rockering here, adds to the sort of nice clip along as well. Now, I still don't think they quite pack the punch of the Alpha Fly 2. I haven't tried the 3 yet. And at times I found the stability somewhat lacking, no more so than something like the Adios Pro 3. But this is a shoe that I felt you almost have to control at times. You want to sort of be on focused to how you're landing with your feet. Beyond that, for me, though, they do much of what you want a race shoe to do. Give you that extra boost when you're working hard in a fast session. One really good thing, there's no harshness here over long time on feet from the ride on the sort of underside of the feet, you know, from the road coming up. And I found there was good protection too. My legs felt less beaten up after tougher sessions the next day. Sadly though, all of that kind of falls away for me because of that one major issue with the heel collars where they cut quite badly, quite deeply from the very first mile that I was running in them. Now I wasn't aware of too much kind of slipping with the heels, but the arc of this kind of collar, it sort of bends in and it just seems to hit my lower heel at the wrong angle and yeah as I said it sort of drew blood after a single mile and try as I might to tweak the lacing add in blister protectors change my socks on subsequent runs I just couldn't prevent it and it was threatening to happen on both heels too so that sort of suggests to me that it's more of a problem with the shoe than it is with the way I was lacing it down now I ran through it in my tests and I'm still waiting for the hole to heal in my um in the heel but despite enjoying the ride for that reason it's going to be really hard for me to recommend these shoes now, I know some other testers have had some heel rub issues, no, but not as bad as mine, and some haven't. So not everyone will suffer this. And if you don't, I think the SC Elite V4 could be a great fun race and tempo shoe. But for me, it hasn't quite worked because of that issue. So I've done four runs in this shoe now, um, a mixture of tempo and some mile reps, uh, some marathon pace. Yesterday's run was eight miles with five times one mile at half marathon pace. And it, it's, it's, it's performed well um, in terms of helping me hit those paces. So it was nice and smooth. The, um, the, the, there's a nice heel to toe motion. I felt like my legs were like turning over nicely as I was running along. That was all good. The foam, um, the sole feels a lot firmer than the V3. It does feel um, less there's less give there, there's less squish. With that firmer sole, you get more more return, more responsiveness. So yeah, it was good. It wasn't it wasn't uncomfortable at all. It just wasn't that level of comfort that I am used to with the V3. So I did feel nice, smooth. I, I felt now the stack height is the same across the V3 and the V4 on paper but it does feel like you're you're sitting a little bit higher on top of the shoe um, maybe because of the way it's constructed you're less sitting into the shoe and more on top of it 
I did feel a bit more um, conscious of that and that I was having to pay attention a bit when I was when I was running on, you know, uh, going off on and off curbs and things like that. I was a bit more um, conscious, but it's, it's a less easy shoe to run in than the V3 is what I'm saying. But the, the pace was good. Uh, the energy term was good. It's not an aggressive um, carbon plate you're not like right up on your toes like you can be I don't like that because I find that I it, my big toe really doesn't enjoy that so that was a plus for me tale of two halves game of two halves with this shoe there's the there's the um midsole and the outsole and then the upper and the upper for me hasn't I prefer the upper on the v3 I think I've made that clear enough now I love the upper on the v3 I prefer that um, the, the midsole and the outsole is different and I guess it's just different tastes as to whether you think that is for the better or not um, so it's potentially potentially it's going to be a bit quicker but it's just a different feel a different kind of ride um, to the v3 Verdict on the SC Elite V4 is this is a fantastic super shoe, a great super shoe, a very bouncy shoe with a fantastic foam in there, a carbon plate, one that's going to help you protect your legs and be really efficient and go out there and run very fast marathon times and set PBs. And all of that is true of lots of shoes these days. And that's kind of the problem we have here with this very saturated carbon shoe market where all brands really have almost converged on a quite a similar design now. And they're all making brilliant shoes that stick to kind of similar patterns of PBA foams and plates and just means you're looking for small differences between them i do think you can get a slightly more aggressive ride from other shoes particularly the nikes i think the vaporfly 3 and the alphafly 3 are lighter more aggressive big old stack of foam and they give you a lot of bounce like this shoe does but they also give you that bit more dynamism and more of an aggressive feel for racing which i do like and then there's even things like the metaspeed sky plus from Astix, which i think is a really good shoe interesting to see what happens with that line in the future but i do think again it's a lighter shoe a slightly maybe more aggressive shoe than the MS SC Elite V4. And overall, it's not really come out and blown a load of those other shoes out of the water. Like, there's a lot to love here, but it's a lot of similar stuff to what we've seen before. And I don't think it's like bettering lots of other shoes out there, even the Adios Pro 3, the Socony Endorphin Elite, Endorphin Pro 3. It comes out and it goes right up against them. You're not really losing anything by picking up this shoe, but I don't think necessarily you're picking it up and going, brilliant, that's better than all those other shoes. That's the one I want to get. And that's what I do get with something like the Alphafly 3 or the Vaporfly 3. And that's why I would lean towards getting those shoes just as more reliable racing options. I think I feel better having on at the start of the marathon. Put me in a marathon with these on at the start line, I'll be delighted. I'm sure I'd go and run very well and be able to run to my best. But I'd be happier wearing something like the Alphafly 3. And when you're spending big money like this and you're not just collecting all of these shoes... That'll be the one I go for over this, and there'll be a few others I'd probably consider ahead of it as well. So yeah, it's a really good shoe from New Balance all round, just one that hasn't really lit a fire under me in the same way that some other carbon shoes have. So my verdict on the uh, New Balance SC Elite V4, I think it is a very good super shoe. Um, I think the problem comes where there are a lot of very good super shoes out there at the moment. For me, this is now top tier. I wouldn't have put the SC Elite V3 in as top tier. I think it was a good shoe. I just don't think I would have ever picked it up in comparison with some other shoes. If I'm going to do a race, like, you know, I'm going to Boston Marathon soon, um, I would never even think about picking up the SC Elite V3 as a shoe that I would go for a PB for, uh, PB at, at one of the biggest races of my running life. Um, but now I would go for this. I think this is an option which you could pick and you would be very, very happy with this shoe in comparison to a lot of the other super shoes out there. Um, I probably, for the price, there are super shoes I prefer. Um, I definitely go for the Alpha Fly 3 or the 1 uh, over this shoe uh, for doing marathon distance um, or, or half marathon distance. I would probably go for the Zocony Dolphin Pro 3, which is one of my favourite shoes of all time. I think that's a very similar shoe to this. I just think it's got a little bit more to it. There's a little bit more propulsion in it. Uh, and I feel like it's just a bit more conducive to running faster. But it's very similar to this, I think. Um, so I would be more than happy if I had to race in the shoe uh, in Boston this year. I think it would be a great shoe to do it in. Um, but I, there are still shoes that I just prefer a bit more. And I think that really comes down to that propulsive feel. Uh, slightly more aggressive design of something like the Alpha Fly 3 and ultimately that energy return that you get from it as well which I think this has got a lot but I think it's just shoes that 
just, just do it better. So I think it's good, but for me, it's still not quite there in comparison to some of my favourite super shoes out there. So the verdict. The problem that happens for brands when a new shoe comes out is obviously the price of this one is now a lot less than the price of this one. Now, if they were both the same price on the shelf, it would be a difficult question as to which one um, to go for. However, given that this one is about 100 quid cheaper than this one now, if it was me and I didn't already have them both in my cupboard and I was going to the shop to buy a pair, I think I would save the £100 and go for this bad boy. So then it's a really mixed bag for me for these shoes. I think there's a lot to love about the New Balance SC Elite V4 and I can see a lot of people enjoying racing in them. I think they offer most of what you look for in a good race shoe. Energy, protection, liveliness and most of all fun. But it's hard to enjoy all of that with a hole in your heel. Without that quirk I think I'd be putting these among my favourite races actually along with the Vaporfly 2, the Alpha Fly 2, the Adidas Primex Strung 2 and the first gen as well. And also the Hoka Rocket X2 is another shoe that I like to race in, particularly up to the half marathon. Are they better than those shoes? Well, probably not. Is the price off-putting? Absolutely, particularly if you're in the UK where the price has shot up more than outside. But we seem to be getting done on price these days over here. And when we roll through the next generations of those other shoes, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see those prices rise. And that'll make this one look a whole lot more competitive. But I don't think I'd be able to choose them above the Primex Strung 2 or the Alpha Fly 2 based on price and performance. Now, if going half a size up fixes that heel collar issue for me, I would be more than happy to chase a marathon PB in them, though. But they wouldn't be my first choice because of that heel. So my verdict on New Balance SC Elite V4 is that if the New Balance remit here was to make this a better shoe for running longer distances or racing longer distances and running kind of a marathon, then I do think the changes here are welcome. I think the midsole changes, I think the upper changes in general as well too, and what you're getting from the outsole as well are real positives here in terms of making the Elite V4 a better shoe for racing over longer distances. And I think the best way to describe it for me is that if you are looking for a kind of one of these super shoes where you know it's not overly aggressive uh things like you know the outfly things like the cielo x1 which i've just tested that this is going to feel like better suited to you something as i said like the endorphin pro range where you can feel good running fast in it it feels like you're getting good level of protection and comfort as well too in that shoe and ultimately as i said if you feel like you have to ease off in places and i feel like this is an accommodating shoe to do that and won't work against you now, well, is it the best super shoe that I've tested or kind of race shoe? I think if you look at it, other things where, you know, as I said, I've used the Hocker Cielo X1. I think that is a totally different prospect to this shoe. As again, that is more of that kind of Alpha Fly style kind of aggressive feel in terms of a race shoe. But that's something you're looking for. Then I don't think you're going to get that in the Elite V4. But if that's, you know, if that's too much of a super shoe for you, then this feels like a better suited option it is expensive would i personally be picking it over other super shoes it just depends on what kind of i think race i'd be doing and i think you know i'm going to be using this at london i haven't you know i didn't you know i've been injured i haven't been able to run a marathon for a year so this would be the ideal type of shoe for me i'd be looking at something like this and the endorphin pro range where i think that's going to give me that faster feel but also going to be a stable shoe, a shoe that I feel like, as I said, if I'm having, you know, or having to slow down or having to ease off, and I need to do that at any point in the race, then I feel like this is a shoe that will allow me to do that and not make it feel uncomfortable to do that. Whereas I think there's a lot to like about the Elite V4. And as I said, I think if you are looking for a super shoe, a marathon shoe, a step up from the Elite V3, and you don't like that overly aggressive feel of some other super shoes and racing shoes that are out there with carbon plates, then I think this is a shoe worth looking at as well. Okay, so there you have it, our multi-tester verdict on New Balance SC Elite 4. If you are looking for some comparison videos with this shoe, don't worry, they are on the way too. In the meantime, you can check out reviews of other super shoes that have launched in 2024. So things like the Nike Alpha Fly 3, the Puma Fast R2, and the Hocker Cielo X1, when we have videos of those all on the channel right now. As always, like, subscribe, hit that little bell to find out about our latest videos, and yeah, we'll see you for the next Run Testers video.